All right, th this, uh, we're going from a 500 level to a 100 level. Um, uh, we're going to be talking about PowerShell. And uh, just a little, he's already mentioned to me um, um, a lot of things. But uh, the other thing um, I like to say is I'm, I'm a big computer. And if any of y'all are familiar with Ghost in the Shell, I went to that movie thinking that there would be a sellout. And when I got there, I was like the only there. But it's a great uh, science fiction if you've ever seen it. I've also got a love for hardware. I like to build high performance computers. Uh, I also have a rack where I set up a lot of virtual machines. You can buy a server for three or four hundred dollars that support, you know, 20 different um, Windows machines. But what was really cool is I took that rack and I put these blue lights around it. And I love it with, with, my, with my blue lights. And then there's a, a picture of my workstation. My next project is uh, what I'm calling the hacker hideout. I'm, I'm going to take this trailer right here and make it look like this. Anyway, today I'm going to talk about PowerShell. And uh, if you ask good questions, I've got these bad boy hats uh, that I'm going to give out to people. Are y'all excited about the bad boy hats? <laughs> so you have to have good questions. I want to be interactive. And uh, also, I've got some big money hats too. So you, you know, if you ask some questions, you might be able to pick a hat that you like. So basically, I, I want you to learn a little bit about PowerShell and get excited about it, uh, especially if you've never used it. And so this is about the hats. Um, First of all, I'd just get to know a little bit about you. How many of y'all are uh, pen testers? Just throw a hand up. And anybody in IT networking? Okay, any uh, SharePoint people? Just a few. DBAs? Nobody? Software developers? Okay, and then I, how, how many of y'all are hackers? Everybody should be bringing their hands up. <laughs> all right. uh, any of you currently using PowerShell? Anybody using 2.0, 3.0? Okay. Uh, so if you've already used PowerShell, you may not get too much out of it, but I do want your input if you can um, add something. You know, maybe I'll talk, say something. You can say, well, you can also do this. And um, so the thing about PowerShell, PowerShell is um, a really neat tool to look at one machine or many machines. Um, and the other thing is, the thing about PowerShell, PowerShell is based on the .NET platform. So anything that you can do in the .NET platform, PowerShell can do it, which is pretty much anything in Windows. The other thing I like about PowerShell, it, it's a great way to automate processes. Yesterday I was watching this Capture the Flag with some of the things they do. PowerShell would be a great tool for Capture the Flag because you can use this tool uh, for, um, for some of the repetitive work. Now PowerShell, this is just a few things you can do with it. You can use it to manage your Active Directory. You can use it to uh, do backups, ex restore, exchanges. As this list shows, you can pretty much do anything using PowerShell in your Windows environment. There's a huge gallery of um, tools where you can take someone else's PowerShell script uh, Microsoft's got a, um, a PowerShell gallery of over a thousand scripts. I often use that as a, a reference. You can get on GitHub, there's 15,000 projects that use PowerShell. And then the one I like is one called Auto SP Installer. I, I use it often for a reference because it's got 7,500 lines of PowerShell code. And what it does, it, it's a tool for installing and configuring SharePoint. But I'm just amazed how this person has, or the, a couple of developers have used this tool to do things like reboot the server and when it comes back it knows exactly where it's at in the PowerShell script. So another, so what's the big deal with uh, PowerShell? Well the, really the big deal is Microsoft is going this direction basically for security. They, 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 over the time they realize um, with scripts 
like in the link in, uh, Linux environment, Linux environment, you can take scripts or you can take commandlets and add them together and make other commandlets. And the GUI in Windows is huge. It takes up a lot of space. And Microsoft is moving away from this GUI for uh, server developers. In fact, there's a, there's a new server that's been out for a while called a nano server. Windows server is 20 gigabytes of data. Most of that's security and um, GUI. The nano server is a half a gig. So they really lowered the, the made the footprint much smaller. And, and I'm going to get into uh, PowerShell in, in a second once I get over a few more of these slides. Um, the other thing is it, it's, it has improved security um, w when you use PowerShell. Now, I was at this conference um, maybe two or three years ago. There was a fellow that came up here and he did a presentation on PowerShell and he showed how to get passwords. And that just kind of blew my mind. And I thought it was smoke and mirrors, but it's actually, he, he was able to do that. And, and Microsoft has uh, have come up with ways to prevent that from happening. Uh, so even though it is a powerful tool, um, it can um, open up some vulnerabilities. A little bit of history, and then I'm going to jump into PowerShell. PowerShell started in 2003. It was called Monet. Um, this guy named Jeff Stover spent years. Well, well, the Monet project was they wanted to have Linux and Windows both using the same kind of platform. And they worked real hard on it. And they got it working, but it took so much work to develop stuff, they decided uh, it wasn't very useful. And the whole time, Bill Gates is telling this fellow named Jeff Snowbers, use the .NET framework, use the .NET framework. And Jeff said, uh, well, okay, I'll give it a try. And, and when he did, he, he put these wrappers around the .NET framework um, uh, snippets, and, and he, came, he came out with PowerShell 1. And in 2006, I used it, and it wasn't that good to me. It felt like DOS. And then when two, version 2 came out, it was a lot better, but it still wasn't quite there for me. When version 3 came out, that's when I really saw the power of uh, PowerShell, and ever since, I've, I've been kind of hooked with it. Right now, we're at PowerShell 5. So I'm going to jump into uh, PowerShell and just show you um, what it looks like. And the first thing I wanted to give you an idea of, of some of the things it can do. I mean, it's you know nice to under, you know, run a, a PowerShell, but some of you may not really know what it can do. Um, there's several ways to start it. Um, PowerShell is built in Windows 10. Um, and if you go to, um, if you go down here to, oh, oh, thank you. Let's see if we can get that back. So you are watching. <laughs> Let's see. Did I lose a... Okay, thank you. All right, so um, the, uh, the way you uh, start PowerShell, there's actually two versions. There's what, one's called, um, it's just a PowerShell command prompt. It looks something like this. And um, you can type in your commands and, and get them that way. And the other way, um, now I've got it on my taskbar. I could come into um, my start menu and then near the bottom is um, uh, Windows uh, PowerShell. I like to use what's called the ISE. And I'm going to start that up. And I'm going to uh, load up a script. So this is the ISE. And uh, what the ISE is, it's, it's just a place you can write your scripts and then uh, execute them. It's got several windows. Um, the top part here is the, the script. The bottom uh, is a place where I can also type in commands. Like so. And I'm, I'm actually going to switch this sideways. 
And so what, what I'll first start off is, this is a PowerShell script. And if it starts with a pound sign, it's basically a comment. And uh, so I've got some comments here. Uh, typically, when you look at PowerShell, you're gonna, you may see something of this format. This is also a comment. It's a, it's a less than and pound sign. And the convention we use is um, we have dot author, and we'll put the author's name. And, but th these are, you, you can put anything in here, but this is the convention that's used for, by PowerShell developers. And if I scroll down, um, we'll look at uh, our first PowerShell command. Now, PowerShell typically starts off, uh, it's a verb dash noun. Like here, uh, start dash process. And, you're, and if I wanted to start Excel, I could say start dash process Excel. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and pass a, a parameter to it. And I got Excel starting. You're probably going, well, big deal. I mean, I can just click on an icon. Well, it, it, um, this is just a getting started. <laughs> so maybe I wanna start up Word. Same kind of thing. So any kind of application that you want to start, you can do a start dash process. Uh, I don't have to pass a parameter. I can just say start process a notepad. So to get started with PowerShot, what I often suggest to people is, you know, each day when you come into work, you know, set up a script, and there's probably some things you do each day uh, to get started with them. Um, with your work, like you, you probably go to um, um, the browser and, and start things up. Um, while we're here, there's a, they, we also have these things called aliases. So sometimes if you look at a PowerShell script, you'll say, well, it doesn't have a, the start dash process. Like here, I'm doing a start notepad, but you notice it doesn't say start dash process, it's just start notepad. And the reason is, um, that's uh, referred to as an alias. So sometimes when you run PowerShell, you'll see things that don't follow the convention. But we have another PowerShell command called git-alias. And if I do a git-alias start, I can see that that alias is the start process. Or if I want to look at all of them, I can um, hit that, and I'll, I'll get a list of all the aliases on my system. Now the other thing you may of, often do is start a browser. And here's where um, uh, often in the morning I have to warm up servers with a, uh, by going to a browser site or, or going to a site. So to start a browser, you basically say start process like we did earlier and provide a, um, a URL. And so, uh, oops, I'm not connected, hold on one second. Nobody's got any questions for a hat? Yeah. It is case sensitive and he gets a hat. Oh man. He's a bad boy. All right. Let me uh, let me make sure my network is um uh, Okay. Yeah, this is um So uh, let's give this a minute for my uh, network to start up. Okay, yeah. Um, well, this is mostly based around Windows. Uh, I'm not familiar with Iron Python, but uh, well, why don't you come up here and get your hat? <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a good question. There, there's a, a, a variable called ps-version table, and um, come up here and get your hat, um, and it will tell you which version it is. Uh, what, what operating system are you running? Yeah, well, if it's Windows 10, it's probably um, 4 or 5. Uh, but again, uh, the, the, the answer would be to, to check the version. Let me, um, let me. Do you have an
Good point. Um, come up here and get your hat. Uh, in fact, this fellow said he had worked with PowerShell. Really good uh, experience. PowerShell people often write their code in version 2.0 because then they can port it to 3, 4, 5, or 5. Um, so let me let me let me try to start this um, process again. Not quite connected. Hopefully I can get connected. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm connected. So I can um, I can start. Um, uh, opening up web pages. In fact, this is this one particular web page is uh, the PowerShell.org. Um, if you're really interested in learning more about it, they've got some ebooks here, uh, videos, podcasts, pretty much anything you need to 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 have to to learn more about PowerShell. Um, the other thing I like to do is uh, sometimes I'll start up several servers at uh, not servers, uh, websites at the same time. But I found out you need to put like a one second delay uh, as these different um, browsers start. And so here I can start you know, three or four sessions at the same time. It does, and I'm, that's a good question, and grab your hat. Uh, <laughs> it does take your default browser, but I'm gonna show you how to um, uh, get around that. Uh, another site uh, is the SharePoint Gallery, and then there's GitHub. Uh, but ba back to your question about um, uh, the default browser, if you want it to start with a different um, uh, browser right here, uh, if you'll notice, I do a start process, and here I want to start Chrome. And so I will basically provide the Chrome uh, executable. Uh, I don't. No, I have it. Come grab a hat. <laughs> um, but anyway, here is this is an example of how to start. Um, um, your browser, but basically use a different browser. So you'd have to go to the executable and then pass the argument list. And, and so when I run this, uh, I'm basically going to start up Chrome. Oh, something's not going right. Oh, I skipped. Um, what I'm doing is I'm passing, um, um, I'm building a string with the carolinacon.org and putting it into a, a variable. And so now I've started Chrome with my, um, with my PowerShell. Some other things you're going to do, I'm, I'm not going to do it here, but you can also uh, pass credentials. There's a, um, there's a credential module where you put the username, password, and uh, so if, you, if you're doing some testing where you, you have to log into the different sites, um, this would be a way to have that automated. Now another thing I do a lot with PowerShell, I'm, I'm constantly searching for strings. Uh, PowerShell does have an encryption, um, but we're not going to be talking about it today. Come, come grab a hat. There was another question. Right. Right. So that, that's a good question. When you run in PowerShell and, and you're doing what they call PowerShell remoting, at that point you're using the PowerShell executable on the remote box. Okay? Come grab your hat. We got down to two. I might, I might save one hat because you may not stay the whole session. <laughs> Go ahead. I can't, I can't. I still can't hear you. Can you come up? 
can you control Chrome as well as you can control oh, yeah. ID? Um, I, um, I don't know. Um, grab, go ahead and grab that last hat. I don't know because, um, I mean, I start up Chrome, but I don't do a lot with Chrome as far as, you know, adding, putting add-ins and taking them out. Um, and, and as I said earlier, anything you do in .NET Framework, you can do with uh, um, PowerShell, but Chrome is a little bit of a different animal, and so I, I, I don't know for absolutely sure. And I'm going to show a little bit of that as I get further on um, here. Um, so the other thing I do a lot is I'm always searching for strings. And uh, you would think it would be search string, but in PowerShell it's called select string. So if I wanted to search for the pattern uh, hello, uh, I would specify a path. And then when I executed this, it found hello in these three different uh, files. I can put a string in there or I can use a reg, uh, uh, regular expression. Uh, the other thing is if you're uh, pen testing, it's, it's a great tool if you want to look through a lot of log files, uh, searching for like error or warning. And then what I could do is I could put this in a script, maybe analyze those warnings and, um, and then from there maybe send an email to me if something looks critical. Uh, the other thing about PowerShell, like when you do a dir, it, uh, we call it a get child item. So if I wanted to look at a list of files, it would be get child item. But uh, I can also, I can use the dir command. And the reason I can use the dir command is because dir, D-I-R, is really a, an alias. So if I do a, a get alias of, um, I thought I had a get alias in here. I don't. But anyway, if I type git alias dir, it would show me this git child item. I can look at event logs. And so here I just quickly did a, um, a look of all my uh, events and my event log and, and how many I had. And then I can do other things like um, maybe I want to look at the, the, the last, the, the newest 15 events in my system event log. So I could pass some parameters, and, and that would be some of the stuff I'd find in there. So just on the dir thing, uh -huh. um, ls is also another. OK, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Part of that Linux series. <laughs> right. right. Good point. Um, the other thing uh, uh, I can, uh, many, so often we do a ping. Uh, in, in PowerShell, it's called uh, test connection. So if I did a test connection, uh, you can see it's doing a ping. But the difference between this ping and uh, a regular ping is I can, um, I can specify I want to ping several items at the same time. Or um, what, uh, what I like here, if you look down at the bottom, I can ping with a by impersonating a person's uh, credentials. So that gives you a lot more flavor or uh, a lot more variety of things you can do. Now I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna do a ping, and this is, a, this is just a variable that I'm building, and I'm gonna do a test ping, and I'm gonna take my results, and I'm gonna put it in this variable called status, dollar sign status. And when I do that, uh, you don't see anything, but if I was to select the status and then execute it, I can see my, the results of my ping. But the thing about this ping, this test connection, uh, this, this is a piping where I'm going to pipe out uh, a format, and you'll see the ping actually returns a lot more additional information than just, you know, that, that the ping's been reached. Then the, the other thing, 
show you, and then I'm going to get more into some, uh, some of the basics. Um, again, I was listening to uh, Capture the Flag and how they often put things into a form. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start up this form called Facebook. So I'm going to pass this URL into this dollar sign URL. And I'm going to create a new object. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-fill um, the form. And, and so I've got this URL. I'm going to create an object. I'm going to, I'm going to create an object that's based on Internet Explorer. And so I've got, a, I've got an object instantiated. And right now you can't see it, so I have to make it visible. So I'm going to say IE is visible. And you'll see right here it showed up, but you, um, it, there's nothing in it. So what I'm going to next do is I'm going to turn on, uh, I'm going to navigate to this URL that I put in here. And now I'm at, I should be seeing Facebook. Now here's a username and password. And what I have to do is um, I have to do an F12 to get to the developer's um, tools to, to look at the code. And the last night, for some reason, my F12 was um, disabled. So I didn't have time to figure out what was going on. But, I, but when you do F12, you're, you're going to see the source code. And in the source code, uh, there's an element called email. And what I can do is I can, I can say ie.document.getElementBy, and I can pass in this bogus email address. And so when I execute that, and then if I jump back over to my um, uh, Facebook, you see it put the bogus in there. So now I can pre-fill pre, uh, forms. Then I could, um, I'm going to go ahead and put a password in there. This is an invalid password. And then I'm going to execute. Um, and if I go back to Facebook, you wouldn't see the password because it's got those little dots. Oops. And then finally, um, I'm going to um, I'm going to hit the log <coughs> login button, and then it's going to it's going to um, it's going to fail because that was an invalid password. So again, if you if you're thinking of terms like capture the flag, and you're going to different forms, and you're looking for flags, you could use PowerShell to kind of automate some of this stuff for you. So that's just a few of the things that um, you can do with PowerShell. But that's actually, what PowerShell really is, it's, a, it's a, a tool to build tools. And before you can build tools, you have to learn more about PowerShell. And I kind of think of that as a discovery. And, and when I first started learning PowerShell, it, it was kind of a little bit aggravating because every time I wanted to do something, I had to do a get help. And PowerShell has a great help pro, uh, routine. Of course, you can Google it. But uh, as you work with PowerShell more and more, you, you're going to find that Git Help does uh, a pretty good job for you. So everything is documented in Help. Um, in fact, the first time you go to, to Help, what happens is it actually goes up to Microsoft, it gets the latest Help files, and it will download it. So when you do it the first time, you may have a, uh, about a minute or two of wait time because it's bringing down all those Help files. And then periodically, you may want to use this um, uh, update help to, to refresh the help files. For those that work in Azure, um, Microsoft is constantly changing the PowerShell commands, so people that work in Azure have constantly have to update these help files. So one of the uh, help things that we looked at was uh, we did this thing called start process. So if I wanted to learn more about start process, I would just do a um, get help start process and it tells, it'll tell me all about it and how it works and all the parameters. But the thing about uh, get help, probably the, the thing I use more common than anything is I'll do a help, get help, and I'll say, give me examples. Because once I see an example, uh, it, it'll, it'll be a whole lot clearer on how I want to, to use the tool. And when I do that get help examples, what you'll see, uh, here's example one. Um, 
they, they may have one or more examples on different things that you can do with, um, uh, with that particular command. So I'm not going to go through all these, but you know, there's, a, there's one called uh, Get Help Full, and then there's one called Get Help Online. And basically what that does, it goes online and gives you a browser view of it. Uh, same thing with Get String or Select String. I uh, did a Get Help on it. So get help is, is your big friend, but a lot of times you don't know what to get help on. I mean, if I'm writing a PowerShell command, wh what, do I, what commands do I have? Well, PowerShell, they, they have a, um, a git command. And basically, uh, the git command will, will tell you all the different commands within PowerShell. Um, so if I do a git command, you can see that there's, there's just hundreds of commands. Well, as you work with PowerShell for a while, you'll start realizing a lot of commands will start with start, or a lot of them be, be create, or, or get. Uh, the, the verbs are kind of common with, uh, with all the different commands. In fact, if I look through here, um, you can see that Microsoft's been pretty consistent. You know, you got your get, your get verb with different nouns. Uh, exporting, enabling, dismounting, clearing, adding, quite a bit of functions and uh, of features in, in PowerShell. Um, maybe I just want to look at the, the verbs with the start command. Right? So I could do a uh, git command, verb, start, and then I'd see all those. And so what I would encourage you to do is uh, when you're playing around uh, at home with PowerShell, just, you know, just kind of do some export exploration of all, all the different commands and start thinking what could you do at your desktop each morning uh, to automate some of the processes. Now, you know, this PowerShell, not only can it automate things that a, a network administrator can do, it can automate things on your desktop, it can automate things in Word and Excel PowerPoint. Um, I haven't seen really anything that, that has not, that I cannot automate um, using PowerShell. Uh, this, this is a real common um, uh, PowerShell command is doing a git service. You look at all the services that are running. And, and just like Linux, we have a piping, and, uh, we have a piping option. And, and I did, um, I've been doing some piping already, but the, the piping is this, this, this guy right here. And bas basically I'm saying I want to get the services and then I want to sort it by name. And when it executes, uh, I've got them all. Well, maybe I don't want to look at the ones that are, um, uh, maybe I don't want to look at all, maybe I just want to look at all the services that start with SE. So I could wildcard it by saying get service SE wildcard, and then I'll get a smaller list of um, uh, commands. And then even from that, maybe I don't want to look at all of those, I just want to see the ones that are uh, running. Well, I can pass that into a, a, a script and say I, I've got a where object, and the where object I want to see if the status is uh, equal to, to, actually I want the one equal to not stop. And so here I can look at all the processes that are running. And then the other big useful command in PowerShell is um, this one called get member. Um, this is going to kind of sound like you're a developer. And when you're writing PowerShell scripts, you are somewhat of a developer. And if you are a developer, you know off, often you have methods and properties. Well, all these surf, service, uh, services or commandlets have properties. And so I can take like this get service and pipe it into the get member. And what, I'll, what I will see, I will see all the methods that are associated with the get service and all the properties. So it kind of helps you understand more of some of the things you can do with that particular service. Any questions? Oh, okay. Oh, no, yeah. You, uh, like when I was doing that select string, uh, let's say I was looking for social security numbers and I had a regular expression, I could put that, it said that the, the parameter was dash pattern, and I put a string in there, but I could put a regular expression and it would recognize it and then search 
for things that met, met, uh, match that regular expression. Okay? Anything else? Other questions? still amazed uh, about that one. Um, a lot of the PowerShell developers in Redmond I, I know and uh, I was telling them about that at a, at a PowerShell summit and uh, I don't think they really believed me. <laughs> and then about a year later uh, they were speaking at uh, DerbyCon and they were actually talking about that and, and how, how to protect yourself from that. Um, so, so Microsoft is um, doing quite a bit to, to protect that, and uh, hopefully next year I'll, I can give you a session on uh, how to protect yourself from people you, um, accessing um, your passwords using PowerShell. Uh, any other comments or questions? Um, here's an, I, I don't use this one much, but this is called P, uh, Get PS Drive, and basically what this does, um, this, this gets your, um, your, your aliases, your certification, uh, certs, um, functions, um, regedit, your C and D drives, or whatever hard drives you have. Um, the other co common module I use is called uh, get, uh, get Content. And basically, that get content is a way to uh, display uh, data. So if I was to do a git content, uh, here I've got a, a PowerShell command, and basically all in that PowerShell command I'm doing is um, I'm, I'm doing a, what's called a write host, and a write host is a PowerShell command that basically outputs something to your monitor. Again, you see the write dash host, write is your verb, and then a noun. Uh, I could also have done the same thing with type, T-Y-P-E, because I'm, I'm, that's a common uh, command on many different operating systems. And the reason that works is because there's an alias associated with it. Uh, type is a git content. Uh, you can also execute PowerShell scripts. Uh, basically, you'd say something like PowerShell.exe and then pass it to script. And so I often do this in bat files um, or, or something where I want something scheduled to happen. And basically, that script got executed. You know, here it says, hello world, hello world. Th this was the script. This is where I'm writing host. And then here's where it actually got executed. Uh, another way to execute uh, PowerShell scripts is just prefix them with the ampersand. And then, um, so there's many different ways to execute scripts. Looks pretty much the same. Now, the security, um, when you start up PowerShell, they have a security model associated with it. The first thing I always do when I try to run PowerShell is they have these different policies. And uh, the first thing I do is just try to run it without any policies applied because they get in my way. And so if you can run the power, uh, if you can execute this script, and, and you don't get any uh, red messages, this is just saying you're turning it on. Okay. It failed because um, when I started PowerShell, I didn't start it off as in administrator mode. Um, but they do have scripts, um, or they have an execution policy, 
And what you do is once you get your scripts written where you want to go in production, you might uh, apply um, a signature on it. Um, and then that's one way to protect yourself for, is to have signed scripts and then only signed scripts get executed. So uh, I've, I've now kind of going into the, um, the really the getting started. I mean, the first part is the uh, get help all the different ways to see how you can find out how PowerShell works, what kind of commands you have. That just takes a while to be, become familiar with it. Over time, there's, there's probably going to be five or ten that you use all the time. But the very basics, um, anything you start with a dollar sign, you're setting up a variable. Typically, it's a string variable. For example, if I want to say hello world, I'll just say uh, dollar sign VAR, hello world, and then execute that. And the, the other thing, uh, I've been executing one line at a time uh, by selecting it and, and coming up here and ex executing it or hitting F8. If I hit this guy, F5, it just runs the whole PowerShell script at one time. But the way I kind of work when I'm writing my PowerShell is I basically get lines going and working and then I just kind of step through it and even when I'm um, even when I go to a customer site I've got all these scripts to do a lot of different things and I just don't go in there and just run that script I'd like to but it takes so much time getting all your error handling in there I often find it more advantage more of an advantage to just go in there select a few lines execute it select a few lines um, sometimes things will fail because things are already created and I can see that when I go line by line. But if I really got hardcore, I, I would have all kind of error trapping in there. Uh, so, so that sets up a variable and if I put it in double quotes, it's going to set up a string. So if I set up these two string variables and then uh, added them together, uh, what that really is going to do is it's going to concatenate these two, two strings. So I concatenate it to two strings. Now if I, um, if I was to put um, a number in there instead and take these two numbers and then uh, add them, if I look at the results, it will um, add them up. Now, for those who are developers, you probably know it's, it's not a good idea to have variables set up where they could be a string or an integer. And so if you really want to, you know, refine your, your, your variables, uh, especially if they're numbers, there, there's a different kind of uh, data types you can define, like here I'm setting up an, an integer. Uh, variables, uh, here, here's another variable that's used a lot. Sometimes you... Um, just want a list of items and we use this at sign, double quote, and then ends it with a double quote at sign and that creates a list of items. And so I'm, I'm gonna pop that into a, a, a variable called grocery list. And then if I was to expose that grocery list, you'd just see um, the, the items in there. I'm gonna skip this because this is, um, um, well, I, I, I won't, I, won't ex, I can't execute it because I don't have SharePoint on here. But uh, this right here, this, um, this add snap in, what that does is, let's say I was working with SharePoint. Well, PowerShell doesn't know about SharePoint. And if I want it to know about it, I'll have to add a snap in. In this case, it's, it's, it's going to be uh, SharePoint PowerShell. If I was working with SQL, and I wanted to know it to understand what SQL was. I would bring in the SQL uh, module. If I was working with um, maybe the Active Directory or, or, or some of the other um, tools in Windows, I, I may have to add those particular add-ins to um, to PowerShell. And so once you do add them in there, then you can pretty much execute more items within po uh, PowerShell. All right. Um, just a few more items, uh, setting up arrays. Here I'm just, I'm basically uh, going to take four numbers, 
uh, and make it the value Z. Because it saw these more than two numbers in there, it aut automatically built an array. So if I want to look at the third item in that array, I'd, I'd wrap it around with brackets. And I'd see the number eight. You can define functions. Um, I've got, I'm, I've showed you roughly 300 lines. I mean, I could go through and just, there's just tons and tons of stuff in PowerShell. But the key to really learning PowerShell is just start using it. And, um, um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, earlier I was showing you the agenda. Uh, I was talking about arrays and con constraints and functions. Uh, all of these samples right here, if you go to that PowerShell.org site, they've got examples of, of all of these different items. Uh, as this fellow was speaking about do-whiles and uh, looping, for if statements, writing to files, uh, saving to X HTML. I've seen some really cool, uh, in fact, I've seen some really cool reports that have been generated as HTML, and on that PowerShell site that I uh, showed you earlier, there, there's a whole white paper about, you know, 50 pages on how to generate reports using HTML and PowerShell. Um, any other questions or comments? Yeah, that's, that's, um, yeah, it's in beta now, right, um, I, uh, as I said earlier, this is Microsoft Direction, um, they're, they're, everything they're doing now is going into PowerShell, um, last year or so, if I did an installation, I, I use a, a wizard or something to, to do the installation, now I have to use PowerShell. Um, Yeah, earlier I was showing you my servers. Uh, that, that's exactly what I do. Uh, I, I've got PowerShell scripts that basically do the installation, and then once Windows is installed, um, it, it will then go through and start installing uh, SharePoint and, and, and configuring it. And, and I've got it down where it takes like 30 minutes, where it used to take, um, if, if, if I, um, it used to take, you know, two to four hours to do a full installation and configuration. Uh, but with SSD drives and you know, faster processors, it, it's been reduced quite a bit. Uh, when I first started doing installation,
issues with SharePoint for a client side, I, I'd say it takes 40, 40 hours. Um, and most of that is because they wouldn't have things ready. Uh, now, I, I can do it in uh, two hours, but I'll tell them four or eight hours. Because in my PowerShell, I have all these parameters. And now I can specifically say I need this value, I, I need to know what your, your IP address is, what your host name is. All the configuration questions can be answered. And then I can execute it and it's done. And if it doesn't, if, if, it, if it's not right, I can rebuild it uh, real quick. But yeah, I, I say I've gone from a week to two to four hours. And, and I'm just constantly seeing new ways to do automation. Um, uh, but I mean, I, I'm still on premise. I mean, the whole world's been moving to the cloud. But even in the cloud, that's how everything is managed now is with these fire shows. Is anybody using Azure or uh, Woz? So you already knew. You already know PowerShell, right? <laughs> right. So. Uh, for, for those people that are network administrators, um, I mean, this, this is the future, so you, you, know, you need to jump in and learn as much PowerShell. Now, and that's not all. There are two, there are two PowerShell uh, user groups, meetups. Uh, there's one in um, Raleigh, and there's one in Charlotte. And we meet once a month, and people will just talk about different things, and, and you can learn so much easier when you have a uh, colleague. Both of them have about 10 to 20 people that are pin regular. And then, if you're really getting the PowerShell, they have the PowerShell games. And the PowerShell games, it's, it's another exciting way to learn a lot about PowerShell. What, what we do in the PowerShell games is uh, somebody will throw out a, a, a simple problem. And then, um, and then all the people in the in the field or out in the audience will try to uh, solve the problem using PowerShell. And so they will have an award for the person who does it the fastest. Uh, then they may have an award for the person who does it the slickest way. Or maybe an award for the person who does it with the fewest lines of code. I mean, sometimes you can do, you can have one long chain of PowerShell command list that, that would do whatever the problem was. So it's just interesting to see how everybody thinks differently on, on solving a PowerShell uh, problem. Well, go ahead. Uh, what kind of environment variables uh, or how they are environment variables being exposed to the shell and can we interact with like Microsoft, Windows? Oh yeah. Uh, you can do that with PowerShell, you could uh, touch almost anything with WMI, ESI, you know, pretty much anything. Like, I don't Well, uh, I'll, I'll hang around if you have any other questions. I, I appreciate uh, everybody uh, showing up today. I wasn't expecting that many people Sunday, uh, Sunday morning. Thank you.